Hello everyone. Today I will talk about the first three actions in variable operation. Preparations have been made. I have added a module, a string type variable, a double type variable, and three table type variables. Now we start the first action, show variable. When this module is running, there will be a form to display the selected variables. For the action settings, I select a string type variable, click to save. Input the string. Now run it. So here is the form, which displays the variable. When you are running the whole module, if there is a show variable action, there will be a form like this. Only when we close it manually can the rest actions run. Next, the second action, variable operate. It can do operations on the variables in the module where it also lies. That is to say, it can operate on these variables. View its action settings. It can operate on three types of variables, but except control variable. Here I choose a double variable, for example. Here is the processing way. If I choose an equal sign, here I can manually input, or I can choose a value in another variable to assign the variable a value. Click test. You can get a test result, but not to really run the action. Save the settings. Now the value of this double variable is zero. Run it. Now you can see the value has been changed into the value I input here. And then if I choose plus sign, here I can input a value or I can also choose a double variable. Here I choose double variable. Here I can also choose a double variable. I input a value manually. Test it. My operation means to add 1 to the value in the variable. Test run it. The value changed here. The operations of the following three ways are similar. So next, I will talk about get string length to get the length of the string. Here to choose the string that you are going to get the length. The length of the string will be saved to double type variable. Test it. Now you can see the length of this string is 18. One thing you need to note, a space is also calculated to be a character length. Next, I will talk about get table rows count. Choose a table type variable. The number of the rows of the table will be saved to this variable. The next is get table columns count. It means to get the columns of the table and save it to the double variable. The next one, index of it means to search another string in a string and then save the index of the new string to the double variable. You can choose the value saved in the variables or manually import the value. Generally, zero is the first index. If I want to search character S in this string variable, I can also save the string that I want to search to a variable, so that I can use a variable here. Here to choose which variable to search. Test it. This is the index of the character S. So the index will be M0. Y1. The space 
two, so s would be three, and we'll save the index three to the double variable. Next one is last index of is similar to index of, but if you set the start index, it will start to search from the end and save the corresponding index of the string to the double variable. So next is random. I need to manually input or choose the minimum value and the maximum value from the double variable. Then you will get a random value from 0 to 10, and then the random value will be saved to the double variable when the module is running. Now test it. You will get a random value. Next one is double to string. It means to save the double variable I selected to the string variable. So the value in this string variable will be overwritten. These are the operations on double type variable. Next, I start the operations on string type variable. Also the processing ways here. For the first one, delimiters. Here I need to manually enter a separator. Or you can save the separator to variable. So you can use separator in variable directly. The whole process means the string in the selected variable will be separated into a few strings by the separator. And then the needed string will be selected through index. To override the string in the original variable, you can also use special split string such as new line tab. You can also save the split strings, but you need to save them to a table type variable. Choose the column. How to save the strings? You can append all line to the end of the table. You can also clear up the table and add all lines after it. Now I try to give you an example. I input S as the separator. And view the index 0. The 0 index is my. And if I choose index 1, so I split the string into two strings. Now move to the next. String replacement. It can replace a string with the string I need. You can also use regular expression to search the string you want to replace. Here I input an S manually. I input a number 9 here. So I want to replace S with 9. Here you can see the test result. The next one, string interception. It can intercept the string in the string of the selected variable. Here I input the start index 0. Here I input the length of the string 5 for example. Here you can see it intercepted 5 characters. If I input 8, now you can see 8 characters. The next one is regular expression processing. It can search the needed string in the string of the selected variable. Here you need to input the regular expression text. You can save the searched string to the table variable or input the corresponding index of the searched results to replace the original variable. The next one is random string. You can get random string. If you input the random source here, the string will be generated from the random numbers. Here to input the amount of the random number. Here I also input random source. The source characters of the string. If I only need two characters, I need to input two here and also two here.
three input box here all together. If you only need two groups of random characters, you just need to finish two input box and leave the third one alone. Now I test it. The next one. The random characters generated by random strain could be duplicated, but this could generate 32 random but never duplicate characters. I can test it. So, if you need random strings like this, you can use this processing way. Next one, append the string. It can add the string to the string in selected variable. You can add string in variable. You can add special string, new line or tab. The next one is get the value of other variables. The process is to choose a variable, to convert the content in it into strings, and then to replace the content in a string variable with the strings. You can choose string double table type variable. If you choose string type variable here, it can replace the string type variable selected on the top of the action settings. But if I choose table type variable, I need to convert the numbers in this table variable into strings. So I need to choose the column and the row. The first row is the default, so that the generated strings can replace the strings in string type variable that needs to be dealt with. Next one, empty value. It will clear up the variable you select here. The next one, spin text to normal article. When this processing way is working, the strings in the variable will be separated by vertical lines and all the strings will be contained with the braces. If the strings are separated into many strings by the vertical lines, one string will be randomly selected and saved to the specified variable. So the string consists of braces in the outmost and strings separated by the vertical lines. Now if I test it, one of the strings will be selected. The last one, string to double. It can convert string type variable into table type variable, but the value in table type variable will be zero if the string type variable are converted into table variable. Save the settings and run it. Now you can see the value zero. Next, I will talk about table type variable. That's also the third action I want to talk about today. I select table type variable. Here to choose the column. The default is all rows. Here is the processing way compared with processing ways for string type variable. There are some additional ways, such as add a row. Click set, you can select variable as new value. Remove a row. Here you can remove the row. You can also remove the row and add the row to the last or the first row of the table. You can also choose to remove the first, the last, or random rows. Next one is process duplicate rows. Here to choose if you are going to process when the values of the columns are the same. Here to choose how to remove the rows. Next, I will talk about the difference between empty value and empty table. For empty value, it will remove the value in a table, but will not remove the rows in a table. For empty table, it will remove both the value and the row in a table. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.